I am not a lemming of social media that you might be, Donnie. You're less than a year into social media and you post like 10 times what I do, which is makes me feel bad because I'm like, <laughs> geez, like this dude, I need to put you in charge of the TCC page. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that sometime. I'll do it while I'm at work and get double pay. They yeah, won't know. Exactly. Gonna, well, that's, that's going to go out on the air now. Don't hey, say uh, that. Well. Donnie, got a quick question for you. Have you ever seen an elevator shaft five story high get demoed? Ah, not in recent memory. Not in recent memory. I had never seen one either. So evidently, based on your answer, you've seen it in the sometime in the past. Across from where I work in Wilson at uh, Home Builder Supply was an old White's Tire Factory. It had been defunct for a couple, three decades. And they demoed it, but they left for last the five-story elevator shaft, industrial elevator shaft, mind you, not a something for pedestrian folk like you and I. And uh, they brought it down by running cabling through it. Mm -hmm. And last Friday, they pulled it down, and it was something to watch. And I, I was, my boss was cool. Everybody went outside. So I filmed it, and you can find it. I've got it up on my IG site. You can find it at world's most famous dj again that's on instagram you can see the video and some of the stuff leading up to it i've been kind of um i guess you could say i was doing a diary of the demo of this building it was actually really cool and amazing how many people would contact me through that yeah but, uh, it, it's stuff that we, we'll have to get up on the uh, carolina contractor show ig it's amazing how many people think demolition is so satisfying you know little kids like slime and things that that make funny noises for videos but i think you know grown men uh just seeing something torn down really really uh is just something to see because you know there was a, a strategy behind that obviously that they, they knew what they were doing and they left the elevator shaft until the last piece of the puzzle so um i just get off on that stuff and i think it's really cool another thing that was kind of neat was uh somebody came up with permission and basically by hand gathered up two pallets worth of the brick because the building is probably 50, 60, oh, yeah. I don't know, 70 years old, and they don't make that brick anymore. And if you have a historical house where you just want the brick, whoever was in charge of demo and the property said, okay, you can do it. And they did it all by hand, but they made themselves a, a couple cubes. And I don't know the exact size of it either, though, but it, it wasn't, you know, engineered or oversized or modular, traditional size. You know, I was thinking about what you just said about your Instagram handle as world's most famous DJ. And, you know, I know that reflects a past life because you had 30 years in, in radio and you were uh, amazing at that. But now, have you ever thought about changing that to the building supply guy or something related to home builder supply? No, I, I'm going to stick with this because it's it's funny. I still do some radio stuff, um, but. I'm keeping the title because no one else can take that title from yep. me. I've actually had a couple of people asking if I would <laughs> give that title up to them. And I'm like, no, I own it. And I'm not even directly in the business anymore. So Tell no, I'm not going to give dollars. that up. For $1 million. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So uh, again, I love starting the show this way, Donnie. We're just talking about something that's happening, whether it's where I work or you work. And it's always based on construction or building or deconstruction. And I did tell Donnie earlier in the show, I put up a hashtag of deconstruction and I got a lot of people uh, trying to find information about uh, leaving the Christian faith. They call that deconstruction. I was like, no, I meant deconstructing a building, but uh, I went on a, a journey and turned them back around and got them on the right path. But anyway, what the show is actually about on the Carolina Contractor Show is uh, cool stuff like buildings being demoed. You build houses, Donnie, as a general contractor. We talk about DIY projects. And today, we're going to get into uh, hurricanes and insurance. And that doesn't sound very sexy, but uh, we're going to put some lipstick on it and make it very interesting. But start at the website, thecarolinacontractor.com. We've got links to past episodes. You can listen, download uh, some podcasts. We've also got links to the YouTube site. All these shows are now being put up on YouTube. Ask the contractor if you have a question for Donnie Blanchard. You can do it right there. And again, let's give the uh, the details of why we believe we have the authority to talk about these subjects. I work at Home Builder Supply in Wilson and Greenville. Uh, we're building supplier, mainly to contractors. Donnie over here is a general contractor, owner of Blanchard Building Company, also owner of SureTop Roofing. And he buys supplies and builds things. 
And uh, someday we're going to progress over to uh, tearing things down and blowing them up and pulling them down with cables too. That'd be a cool gig. Yeah, it sounds like it. I don't know if I'm qualified for that. That's more in the commercial world. And um, I'm glad you got a chance to document it. You, you've been busy, man. I follow your stuff and uh seems like you've got a video a day up. So I, I bet it's loud where you work. It is, but most of it I do uh, on the side, and uh, I put up pictures of food. And since we eat out um, mm -hmm. most, I don't know, a couple times a month, we have a grill out right there in the uh, business. There's always good food going around we take pictures of. But, you know, Donnie, we could digress on that and go too long. Uh, coming up this weekend is going to be the beginning of hurricane season. And this is the time that you need to get ready for hurricanes. And we all know that there's a, a lot of things you can prep for, but probably the most important thing you need to be ready for is the insurance maze that you have to navigate after hurricane. Chances are where we live in North Carolina, we're going to get affected by a storm. It might be a tropical storm, could be a hurricane, could be a couple. And there's plenty of places you can go online and find things you need to do before a hurricane hits. And those are important things. And we'll hit a couple of those. But uh, the thing people don't think about until it's maybe too late or after the fact is insurance. Do you have enough insurance? Do you have the right insurance? Do you have flood insurance? How do you file and get repairs done as quickly as possible? There's even a few things you can do before and after a storm that kind of proverbially will move you towards the front of the line, so to speak. So let's go ahead and kick this off because you have a lot of history with insurance and claims, Donnie. What is the first thing people need to do to be ready for a hurricane? Well, assuming that we have a landfalling hurricane that's going to make it uh, this far inland, we're about the middle third of the state, and I know you're a little closer to the coast. Um, we have a lot of people that listen to us on the coast. So uh, when that thing makes landfall, you know, you've got a couple of days to do your thing and document a few things, secure a few things. And, and I'll, the first piece of advice that I give folks is take pictures of all four elevations of your house. I do that whether there's a hurricane or a re-roof situation. Um, you know, take pictures of your house. You don't really pay attention to it until something's wrong. So uh, basically having those time and date stamped pictures are invaluable. If you're the person who gets a tree through their house or a tree on their house, um, heaven forbid, but that does happen. And uh, having those time and date stamped pictures of all four elevations is uh, just a quick reference. And it basically proves to the insurance company that your house was in one condition prior to the hurricane, and they can obviously see it's in worse condition after. Uh, the rule of thumb in insurance is they put you back where you were before the storm. No more, no less. When I went to adjuster school back in, oh gosh, 2005 maybe, that, that was the first thing that they taught us. And uh, the second thing was what I mentioned last week in, in the show that when you have your own insurance policy, always take a higher deductible because the likelihood of you having a claim it's pretty low and paying that higher deductible is going to reduce the cost of your premiums. But rule number one was put the, put the insured back where they were before the time of the loss. So All right. um, if I had to say uh, a close number two, it would be have a relationship with a general contractor or a roofer because uh, the majority of the damage that happens after a landfalling hurricane is to your roof and shingles seem to be a vulnerable point. Uh, three point, uh, I'm sorry, three tab shingles even more so than architectural shingles because they have three independent tabs and uh, wind damage is, is very likely in, in the hurricane situation with the three tabs. But um, yeah, yeah, definitely having, having being on somebody's books and saying, Hey, if something happens tomorrow, can you just put me on the list to do a tarp? And we take appointments in advance that way. And if you don't, that's great for everybody. And you call us and say, Hey, just take us off the schedule because uh, we're pretty much going to have about 50 other people that need us yesterday. Um, and, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of resources that you can uh, lean on when it comes to a storm prep situation. But um, a few things as far as fortifying your house are, are probably what's most important. They actually have a thing at the coast and called a fortified roof. Um, and it's a certification that you get. And, and there's an independent fortified roof inspector. And you have to install it a certain way. Mm. It turns out the way we install a, a roof just for the 50-year non-prorated warranty is similar to the fortified situation. There's a few other things like stainless steel nails, um, things that, that are more important at the coast rather than inland. But it's a, a good question to ask your insurance company, hey, if I get a fortified certified roof installed, can I save money on my premiums? I know the answer is yes. 
you know, at the coast and maybe five, 10 miles inland. But uh, I'm not sure about the middle third of the state, but definitely a worthy question to ask because on my end, from the roof replacement standpoint, it's, it's not thousands, it's just a few hundred more dollars. But, um, you know, speaking of fortification, uh, strengthening your door and windows and making sure everything that's locked, you know, keeping your garage door closed because in a wind event, the garage taking on, on uh, you know, hurricane force winds is a really big deal. Uh, reinforcing your roof, I would say, would probably only pertain to um, things like flashings and making sure all that's in place. Uh, and, and, you know, a roof inspection takes care of that because we cover all points of what could be vulnerable during that. And, you know, the reason all this is a big deal and is that some of these hurricanes, they may give you a 10 day warning, but some of these hurricanes, they show up on a radar and they're making landfall, you know, two days later. And, and that gives us just a, a tiny amount of time to prepare, get all of our ducks in a row and figure out what happens if we do in fact have an insurance claim. You know, that's a good point because we'll watch hurricanes form out, come off the coast of Africa, and we'll watch them, and then we just become disinterested once they maybe indicated they're not going to affect us. But then once in a while, one of them pops up off the coast of South Carolina, and you've got like 36 yeah. hours. And right. it's, I'm assuming it's not going to be practical to ask your, your roofer on call to come fortify your house or give you a check on it, uh, you know, a day before something's going to hit. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, having, having adequate time is, is a real thing and, and it's not likely it only happens a couple of times in every decade where we really have to, you know, respond and really quickly, or, you know, something comes up the gut and it's still a category two or a three when it gets to us, but, uh, preparation is everything. And you don't want to be that, that person that's caught sitting on your hands. If, if something does hit you. And, Again, we're not trying to make this a big commercial, but one of the things you can do is just visit SureTopRoofing.com or give SureTop Roofing a call because you guys, as you mentioned, you can do estimates and inspections and let somebody know, hey, you might want to take care of this. Or you might be able to say, man, you're tip-top shape. And that yeah. right there is kind of a, a, a priceless thing because you can sleep well at night. Um, not to rush this, Donnie, but I want to shift gears a bit and talk about what homeowners should do immediately after a storm passes because the main topic of the sh the show is insurance claims. So let's dive into that. I mean, is making that claim the, the first thing you do? or It really is. It? Yeah, because everybody in your zip code is going to be doing the same thing. So getting mm -hmm. in line is, is first priority. Uh, most insurance companies have a 1-800 line that you can call to file the claim. A lot of people are old school and they want to go through the insurance agent, and that's fine because that's that's making that insurance agent do his job. But at the same time, I think you get better results by going through the 1-800 uh, number. But a lot of people don't even know that 1-800 number until after right. the storm hits. So, you know, I, I would say uh, go ahead and research your insurance company's hotline for filing a claim. And it's usually right there on their website. And this sounds bad, but a lot of people don't even know who their homeowner's insurance is through until an accident mm -hmm. happens. And then they have to call the agent, wait for him to call them back, research policy numbers, and and get their ducks in a row that way. So right. by that time, you've lost, what, three days in the process? And yeah. the name of the game, especially if you have damage that's going to affect your quality of life, the name of the game is is getting in line and being the first in line because the, everything from the adjuster coming to see you to the flow of the money to the contractor getting the money in hand to do the repairs, all that's dependent on your first reaction. So what are some of the things you need to check on before you call your insurance company to, to determine, Hey, I need to call them. I've got damage. What are we looking for? Okay. So the main thing, um, uh, it, it, like I said, do a visual inspection on the exterior. And, uh, of course you start with the roof and, and it usually having a roof inspection prior to the storm is your best bet because you know what the mm -hmm. vulnerable points might be. So that being said, people don't, they take for granted until they see water coming into your heated or cooled living space. They don't worry about the attic, but the attic, you know, often is a telltale. If you have blown in or bat insulation overhead and you have a leak, a lot of times that insulation is going to absorb the water or the moisture and, mm -hmm. and it's going to go away. If you're, you got to think hurricanes always happen in the summertime. So uh, it's always going to be hotter and that attic's going to be what another 50 degrees warmer than the ambient temperature on your interior. So, so if you do have a slow leak or something, uh, that water could evaporate before it ever makes it makes its presence known on on the inside on your ceiling. So uh, lots of factors to consider when it's as easy as you know dropping your pull down stairs 
and taking a quick look around with a flashlight. Uh, something we see often in the roofing world is people can see daylight. You know, and if it's a dark attic, you look around anywhere where light penetration may be happening. And, you know, light mm -hmm. penetration doesn't necessarily mean a leak. We could have something at the collar of a boot. So it's up off of the roof a few inches, but you still have an, an issue and a potential leak place that could be addressed before it does any damage to the inside. Um, as funny as this sounds, you know, look in your crawl space because uh, uh, th these hurricanes, they produce so much moisture that the runoff from the hurricanes, you know, could introduce excessive moisture into your crawl space and you just don't know it until you've got an issue with mold or something to the likes. And, and really the only other thing is if you have a power outage, of course, you want to check everything to make sure that all your electronic devices work after the power comes back on because we see uh, surge happen all the time. And of course, it'll knock out a couple of TVs and all that counts under coverage C, which is contents coverage on an insurance policy. So uh, it's just good to do, you know, a one or a two day one over, check out everything in your house inside and out, everything from uh, what keeps it watertight to uh, all your electronic components. And a lot of people don't understand water tables. You could have positive drainage from your house. You could go outside in a rainstorm and see that the water comes off the, the gutters or, or down pipes and, and everything moves away from the house. But when that ground gets super saturated, which hurricanes and tropical storms tend to do, you can literally have water come up from under your house and fill up into your crawl space or basement and you might not even know it especially if it's a crawl space because we tend not to go into those very often you've got a couple inches of water just sitting there and then it drains back down over a few days and you're never aware that you've got a water issue and as you said that's where mold and stuff can also pop up so just be aware of taking a peek under the crawl space um let's get down to brass tacks by the way do you know where brass tacks came from that I phrase do not. Is it T A C S or T A X? Uh, T A C K. Sorry. Well, it could have been T A C K S. That's how I found it. I looked it up. Um, it's Cockney, like you know, English. It means bare facts. So you're hearing <laughs> them say, "Oh, right, yeah, bare facts," and somebody probably <laughs> thought it said brass tacks, <laughs> and so that's what it means: brass tacks, bare facts. Um, go into filing. I guess my question is: um, before you file. How do you know if the damage is worth more than your deductible or if it's worth filing at all? Is there a way you can take a quick peek and say, this ain't going to be but $800 to fix versus $10,000? If you've got a tree going across your house and your rafters are broken, that's obvious. But what about th those borderlines? Yeah, well, everybody wants to know about a roof claim and, and what justifies a roof claim. A lot of times I have homeowners call me and they say, Hey, I, you know, I have a leak inside. Can I file this on my insurance? And I'm thinking probably not because, um, you know, a single leak is usually an indicator that you have a bad pipe boot or some bad flashing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, neither one of those uh, are going to qualify you for a full roof replacement. What does qualify you for a full roof replacement are wind damage and uh, hail damage. And of course, in a hurricane, I, I don't know. I think hail damage is more related to a tornado situation, but I, I don't know that I've ever heard that hail damage is incorporated with hurricane. So wind damage is going to be your only option. And if you have shingles missing or flip back, they call those creased shingles. If you have those on, say, the front of the house, but not the back, um, there there's a chance that the insurance company would only pay for half of your roof. So I tell people it's pretty black and white when you've got missing shingles on both sides of your roof. So if you've got front elevate, uh, I'm sorry, front slope and rear slope damage, um, then, then the likelihood of them replacing your entire roof is pretty darn good. Uh, it's a toss up. If it's only half, uh, either front or back, then it really depends on the insurance company. And it's hard to say how they'll make that call. But, you know, if it's just uh, a small leak or a couple of shingles missing, then normally that falls into a minimum repair situation, which that, that ranges between $500 and $1,000. And usually that falls under what is a standard deductible these days. So in that case, you just call your local roofer or somebody yeah. to come in and make that repair if you can't do it yourself. Um, yep. We'll get a little bit later show on, uh, we talked about last week, reducing your mortgage payment with your insurance, but there's also something how it affects your insurance if you have a new roof on your house. But um, let's move to the other end of the spectrum. It's not small damage. You have damage that's going to greatly exceed the amount of your deductible. Um, you having a background in insurance, Donnie, 
what does filing the claim involve in this case when you've got, let's say, a tree through your roof? Okay, so uh, the insurance rule of thumb in that situation is anytime you have more than three trades involved, and obviously three a tree falling through your roof is going to be roof, framing, boxing, gutters, drywall, paint, insulation, uh, probably flooring. So it's going to hit several different categories. And the insurance company, when there are three trades or more involved, they have to pay you to hire a general contractor to oversee that. So normally what that equates to is 10% overhead and 10% profit. So they enter all those values in their uh, software and they have to pay you to fix it. And then they add 10 and 10 for a total of 20% on top of that. And that allows you to hire a general contractor. Um, one other piece of advice I could give is, you know, call several roofing, I'm sorry, several tree removal contractors, because those guys can be anywhere from 8,000 to 2,000 for the same exact thing. And, you know, make sure your tree removal contractor is familiar with insurance standards, because the rule is they'll pay whatever it takes to get the tree off of the covered property. Covered property means property that's covered under insurance. It'll, it'll pay whatever it takes to get the tree off the house but they have a $500 limit for removal from premises. And I'm not saying that the tree companies know how to finagle those numbers, but they, they usually know how to work it pretty good where you're not out of pocket with the insurance company. And all my insurance agents out there, sorry, but that's the truth. And um, yeah, it, but, but in the case of major damage, you know, uh, those pictures I mentioned earlier are going to be key because it's going to show what condition you were in before the actual damage occurred. And, um, you know, uh, there, there's a couple advantages to having a local agent and um, the, the local agent can hold your hand through that. They may be able to recommend, you know, certain subcontractors that they have good relationships with. And, and sometimes you can't wait. Sometimes you have to find a tree man now because you need to live in your house. And um, if that's not the case, of course, they can hold your hand through the process of uh, getting you a place to live while your house is under construction. They'll provide things like contents forms. And so uh, side note there, it's good to take pictures inside the house. I always preach about the four okay. elevations outside. Take pictures of your closet. Take pictures of your jewelry cabinet. Uh, you know, you, are they, what's it, jewelry box cabinet? I don't know. You got a jewelry <laughs> cabinet, man. But You're killing you loaded. it. You, mm -hmm. you already have a separate you don't policy need for that. And, and side note there, since I was involved in insurance, you know, there are separate endorsements for things like that that you can add. So if you do have a large jewelry collection, then you probably need to make that known to your insurance agent and they'll give you coverage accordingly. But, but yeah, take pictures of the inside of the house. Your contents are, are not just your clothes, it's your furniture, um, things in your kitchen, you know, uh, mm -hmm. basically just everything that you own on the interior. So yeah, if we've got a category four coming, that's going to make landfall, get it done. It'll take you 20 minutes to do the outside, the inside of the house and you're covered. And it's going to upload it to the cloud and you'll have access to it remotely no matter where you are or if you need to send those pictures to somebody. Yep. So you file the claim, Donnie. Uh, we know somebody comes out. Who is the first person and is there a time frame? I know things can be up in the air depending on the severity of a storm, but on average, what would you say? Yeah, um, so when I was an in independent insurance adjuster, I had a rule that I had to make contact within the first 24 hours and then usually they'd like for us to go out within 48 hours, but... In the event that you have 100 claims dropped on you, then that's just not humanly possible. So uh, normally I tell people realistically, if you see the adjuster in the first week, it may take as much as two weeks and mm -hmm. it may take as many as two more weeks to get your first payment. And uh, I know that sounds crazy, but, uh, you know, if it's a big enough storm, then that's that's just kind of reality. So what are some of the other things you have to look forward to coming? Because I know you're going to have people wanting to fix yeah. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the the people that want to fix this stuff, um, if you have a relationship previously, then they may go ahead and jump on your stuff if they know you're good for, for it. But all these contractors and subcontractors are going to have so much work at the same time that they're going to want to guarantee that they get paid. And I've seen a shift in subcontractors because if anybody's ever gotten burned, and a lot of people got burned, you know, back, what, 14 years ago when the market tanked, and so mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, they'll get halfway done with the job and they want some money up front. And um, mm -hmm. if the insurance company's dragging their feet, and I, I will say in their defense, they used to have to issue checks and now they issue payments electronically. So that that's cut at least a week off. And um, hey, Daisy, <laughs> she's getting in on the radio show. If you're not watching this on YouTube, my dog has entered the chat. Um, anyway, but 
yeah, um, getting getting the money in hand is a big deal, and I'll elaborate on that a little bit. Normally, what they do is they send you about seventy percent of the total value of the claim, and that's after de- the deductible has been removed. But uh, they they don't send you the whole thing because they want to make sure you don't just run with the money. And as long as you have an RCV policy, which means replacement cost coverage, um, then then they owe you that depreciation. So if it's a ten thousand dollar claim and they pay you seven up front, they want you to get the work done, and then they'll pay you the the three thousand on the back end, and so um, or less minus the d- deductible. But mm-hmm. um, you know that that's how it kind of works, and the depreciation is based off of whatever was damaged. If your roof was on its last leg and you had a 30 year roof and you've had it for 28 years and you, you know, basically they may depreciate that a little heavier than the 70, 30 ratio. But, um, most of the time they give you enough to work with because they understand that you need some money up front to deal with these contractors and get everybody paid. So there's an acronym or an abbreviation in the insurance business, uh, Donnie, well, uh, RCV or RVC, mm-hmm. I see it. What does that mean? Yeah, RCV, that's replacement cost coverage that I just mentioned. The alternative is actual cash value, which is ACV. The ACV, if you have an ACV policy, it means that when they depreciate whatever is damaged, you don't get that depreciation back. And the, that's the big difference between the two. But uh, what qualifies you for replacement cost coverage is that you carry at least 80% of the total value of your house or covered property. So, you know, basically, if you have a, um, half million dollars worth of coverage, then I'm sorry, if you have a half million dollar house, then you have to carry $400,000 worth of insurance coverage to qualify for RCV. When I worked Hurricane Katrina, you know, so long ago, uh, a lot of insurance agents got lazy and they didn't have enough coverage on their people so that when, uh, you know, they got flooded and, and they had wind damage, you know, water damage, everything, and they got hit from all sides. Uh, they didn't carry 80% of the total value of their house. And we had to run something called an ITV report. It's called uh, insured to value. And we just did a quick mm-hmm. appraisal. And, you know, some people were right on the borderline and usually the insurance company will just roll with that. But the people who were way off, you know, they they had hundreds of thousands of dollars depreciated and they were never mm-hmm. able to recover that. So I saw a many a insurance agent flee town. And I mean, they never came back to New Orleans, but, um, you know, they, it's just a, a thing that people don't know to ask the right questions. And so uh, it, it is a good thing to ask your insurance agent, hey, you know, my house is valued, especially now because the value of houses have shot up. I bet there are a lot of underinsured mm-hmm. properties out there and people don't even know it. Yep. I would have to agree with that 100%. Um, kind of a twofold question. Uh, temporary pairs, how important are they? And how do you know if you spend $2,000 to get some repairs done that your insurance company is going to reimburse you for that? I'd say uh, most of the policies to the tune of 95% of policies have some sort of language in there that says that as a homeowner, it is your obligation to mitigate your damages. Meaning if you have a hole in your house and you just let it go, uh, it gets to a point where the insurance company doesn't have to cover that damage. I mean, they can cover what it takes to, to stop the water intrusion, but all the damage on the inside that occurred uh, they'll consider that as neglect, and um, they they put it on you as a homeowner in most cases to to mitigate those damages. And the other side of that is they will pay you back for that. So you just have to really document what was done, and and basically the money exchanged, maybe a a, a clear check or something like that. And a, a you know because uh, in a situation like that, everybody's in a hurry. And can you get to yeah. me? Yes. Well, come on, let let's go. Let's get it done. And uh, a lot of times, you know, you don't have to send an estimate. Maybe you give something over the phone or you don't even know what to do. If you're a contractor, from my standpoint, you just show up with a truck full of tarps and you get them dried in and uh, and then send them a bill that they'll in turn forward to the insurance folks. And that's kind of the same thing about watching for uninsured or uncertified contractors or repairmen, even though you're in a hurry and somebody came up to your door and says, I can do the work. You still need to see if you can do a little quick homework on them, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you should, you've seen it before. And, uh, the 800 numbers on the trucks that come out of the woodwork when we have a storm event around here, mm-hmm. uh, you know, storm chasers are a real thing. Unfortunately, uh, they have, they have diluted my market. They have made the possibility of getting a insurance claim filed successfully a lot harder. And, uh, they've really just changed the game in, in the roofing world. And so I'm, I'm not a fan. Um, 
one other piece of advice if, if you're a homeowner, what they're going to do is knock on your door and tell you, hey, we can get to you now or we, you know, we, we can we can handle your insurance company for you, but you need to sign this paper. And that paper is called a contingency agreement. Um, mm-hmm. Not all contingency agreements are bad. And and a lot of times people will say, hey, if I'm going to do all this legwork for you, then you can't just go give the work to somebody else. And that's fair. Right. But what happens with these storm chasers is, you know, they target little old ladies and they they get them to basically sign their work repairs away. And, and they put all these harsh penalties in place that, if you find out that they're crooked, you can't back out of it. So, you know, the fine print at the bottom of the contingency agreement is what's really important because I've seen little old ladies have to go to court and pay as much as four or $5,000 because they found mm. out the company was crooked. They were from Texas and, you know, they meaning they weren't going to have much of a warranty if they ever needed the, the company right. to come back. You know, uh, they, they were here to make a quick buck and they got found out beforehand. But the, unfortunately, um, little old lady had signed the, the the contingency agreement already and they followed through, took her to court and they were uh, successfully rewarded that four or five grand. I, I hate it, but it happens. Well, and they probably had a cow- cowboy sticker on the back of their van and that should have been a signal <laughs> right there too that they're going to be crooked. Hey, I want to add one more thing. Last week we talked about uh, how you could lower your mortgage payment monthly by adjusting your deductible with your homeowner's insurance. My example was we went from $1,000 to $2,000 on our deductible, but our uh, monthly mortgage payment dropped 150 bucks. So in eight months and change, you paid for the difference. Another one, and you obviously, Donnie, being the owner of SureTop Roofing, know this to be true. Don't think that if you have a 37-year-old roof on your house and a hurricane comes through and puts a big hole in it, the insurance company is going to come back and say, hey, we saw the estimate SureTop Roofing gave, put your new roof on. We're going to pay for the whole thing. Your insurance company is not going to do that. But if you do get a new roof on your house, you need to call your insurance company and let them know because many of them will give you another deduction on your monthly cost of your insurance policy if they know you put a new roof on your house. And that's big because they don't do it for many things, but it shows the importance of putting a new roof on your house and to make sure you don't let an old one sit there before a storm comes. Yeah, I agree all the way around. I mean, if you're going to spend that money, it's worth, you know, shooting the people who have a vested interest in your house, that information just to say, hey, guys, you know, we're we're in this together. And I just took a, an expensive measure to protect both of our assets. Yeah, again, it's mitigating damage and mitigating potential damage by having a, a strong structure in place. Again, visit SureTopRoofing.com. They'll do free estimates and give you a once-over on your house and uh, recommend anything needs to be done. Or maybe get the old Donnie thumbs up saying, man, you guys are in good shape. And imagine not worrying about the roof on your house if the tropical storm is coming or something. You know, man, I've got a, I've got a pretty solid thing sitting right here. Again, Lots of tips on prepping for a hurricane, but the insurance is what we miss the most. Have those numbers ready. Have a roofer on file. Have maybe if you know a GC, someone like Donnie, who, for example, could come to your house and recommend, here's how you mitigate this. Do this. I can bring you some a piece of OSB if you can put it up. Having those phone numbers available. Pictures, as Donnie said before and after, but mostly before on the outside, the four elevations. And as we forget, the inside pictures can help document your possessions when you don't have the serial numbers or exact uh, figures on everything, but you can show them, hey, look, this was the couch. It was fine. The floor was didn't have any water. Now the next picture, the, it's got six inches of water in it. You can quickly show a, an insurance company your claim and documentation that, hey, this was not here before this storm hit. Yep. And for what it's worth, they're calling for a pretty darn busy hurricane season. So, uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's going to be a hot summer, and and usually when it's extra hot, you know, the hurricanes are going to roll in, and we've dodged a lot of bullets. I know we had several landfall and hurricanes a few years ago, but it's been yeah. a minute, and especially with the hailstorms, uh, which are, you know, likely this time of year as well. So I just tell everybody, you know, be smart about it. Go ahead and be proactive, and, and we're happy to come out and check out what you have and just kind of give you a, a free evaluation and say, you know, you, you might need to fix X, Y, and Z your roof's in good shape, but, but you may consider doing a couple of these things to prevent any future, uh, water damage. 
Yep, exactly. SureTopRoofing.com if you want to get that taken care of. And if you want to uh, talk to us, go to the website, thecarolinacontractor.com. You can email us. You can reach us through social media. you got ideas for interviews or topics you want us to do. Man, we're we're all ears. We like doing it. We like just talking about uh, houses and buildings and DIY. And as we just proved with today's show, sometimes the paperwork that's involved with owning a house uh, is the Sports Center of DIY. That's the Carolina Contractor Show. And we hope to see you again next week and hope to that you hear us next week too on the show. Have a great day, everybody.